the best way I can explain this is the most simple sentence that you teach. Oh, that's a good one. Three. <laughs> I, like I love you. I love you. Okay? Yeah. In the sentence, I love you, you've got the subject, the predicate, and the direct object. Okay? Mm-hmm. Each one is totally unencumbered by any modification. Each one has no temporal uh, limitation to it. It has no um, circumstantial limitation to it. Mm-hmm. The, the sentence, I love you, says, I, <laughs> from the beginning of time to the end of time, love, the verb, mm-hmm. the action, you, the direct object, with no limitation whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Now, and if I say, I love you more today than I did yesterday, oh, my God, no, I really got myself in trouble. I see. If I say, yeah. I love you more than anybody else, um, mm-hmm. that really chops to pieces. How about I say, I, in my present capacity, in my newfound knowledge of who I really am, mm-hmm. love you. Mm-hmm. You know? Every time I try to throw something else onto that simple sentence, it can only make it less than the absolute. Hmm. All right? Yeah, I get it. It can only make it less than the absolute. Right. So whenever we say something, we want to choose, even if it sounds like pig Latin, even if it sounds almost like non-good English, if our grammar teachers would come back and spank us, Mm. You know, <laughs> it's better. It's better to be succinct and plain in absolute in our terms mm. and not modify things. Adverbs and adjectives will destroy your claim. Mm. So if you can talk to the judge like a three-year-old saying to his mom, I love you, mm. you can get more work done than if you try to sound like a fancy attorney. Mm. 